For all of you printers who like to print really big, it's time to meet the new kid on the block. This is the FormBot Raptor. Hey there printers, it's Jason over here at 3D Matter Makers and I finally got in my FormBot Raptor. Now I've been waiting for this thing for over a month. Of course I ordered it during the Chinese New Year so I had to wait. But as soon as it got in, Chris over at Tiny Machines here in Texas threw it together, did some testing and some fine tuning on it, packed it up and sent it back out to me. I had it three days after he got it. So I'm really happy with this thing so far. It's printing great. I had some initial setup issues that I'm worked through. Nothing big, nothing major, all my fault. But let's get into the specs on this thing. This is an FDM printer. It is a 400 on the X, 400 on the Y, and 500 on the Z. So this is a very large format printer. This thing is a tank. It's built out of all 4040 extruded aluminum, or aluminum, whichever way you want to say it. It has a direct drive extruder as opposed to a Bowden, which I've been looking forward to trying out. The hot end is rated 470 degrees, although Chris at Tiny Machines did mention to me that you don't want to take it over 450 unless you pull out the PTFE liner or you order the, uh, the all metal hot end, which I think is an extra $25 if I'm not mistaken. Now while this thing has a 400 by 400 bed, the heater on it's only 200 by 200 by default. Now I think for an extra 150, you can order the Kinevo 400 by 400 heater. That'll take care of getting the entire bed on this thing nice and even. This thing has a 350 watt power supply, which is awesome, so you don't have to worry about being underpowered on this one. And this also comes with a BL touch sensor and auto bed leveling. And honestly, I'd never had a BL touch sensor before, and I'm in love with it. They're great. I get it. Now stock, without the high temp hot end or the Kinevo upgrade for the 400 by 400 bed heater, this thing runs at $899. Like I said, for an extra 150, you can upgrade the heater bed to 400, and for an extra 25 on top, you can order the all steel hot end. I strongly suggest that you check out Chris over at Tiny Machines. They actually have a new site, which is formbotusa.com, and it looks like they're gonna be a licensed distributor of the FormBot. I've been playing with this thing for five days now, and I couldn't be happier with the performance. Now, of course, first thing I have to do, I have to assemble it. Now, assembly on this printer is really straightforward. I mean, like your Creality printers, it comes mostly assembled already. All you really have to do is attach the gantry, mount the hot end, attach the control board, and the control panel and plug in some cables. And of course, there's a video to walk you through it too. There's a single 15 pin cable that connects the hot end and the extruder to the control box, which I really like because I'm lazy as hell, and I like that. The spool holder, it's the kind that sits on top with just the two roller bearings. If you don't like that, you can download one of the regular spool hold prints for the uh, for the uh, T-Rex. I believe those should work from what I've been hearing. Now, as you can see, this only took me less than a minute to assemble. But for the rest of you mortals, you can probably knock this out in well under 30 minutes. I mean, actually, you could probably do this in 20 minutes if you really know what you're doing. But it's a straightforward, simple, easy, clean build shouldn't be any problem at all. Now first thing I want to mention is that the SD card on this thing, the test print is actually a Benchy. It's about time. You know, I'm not a big fan of cats, and I'm certainly not a big fan of Decapa Cat. But whatever, it's what comes on most of these. But this one comes with the Benchy, and I prefer that because as tired as we all are of printing the Benchy, the fact of the matter is, we can all gauge exactly what is or is not wrong with a printer by a Benchy test print. A cat can be just a little bit more difficult to find those flaws in. Now the first print that I ran was this black Benchy. Now I made the mistake of not actually manually fine tuning the bed. The Z offset setting on this thing was just a hair off when it came to fine tuning at the hundreds. So I went back, recalibrated, and used the one kilogram spool that came with it this time to run a test print. But this does come with a one kilogram roll of PLA. Now once I had fine tuned this, my bottom layer adhesion problems were over and it came out absolutely fantastic. But there is a note here. If you look very closely at this print, you will see there is some salmon skin. It is very, very, very minor and it comes off with sanding without a problem. Now I'm sure this is something that can be fine tuned out as this is a brand new printer 
and there hasn't been a lot of time to get fine tuning done on this yet. This is printed straight from the SD card with the stock settings, which if I'm not mistaken is printing at 100 millimeters a second, which is really impressive. Even with this slight bit of salmon skin, it's really impressive that it pulls off this accurate of a print at that speed. My other printers can't handle that at 100 millimeters a second. Hell, I'm lucky if my other printers can run at 100 millimeters a second. Now for my next print, I have a large format printer. I have to print large. So I decided to print out Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings. Now this thing turned out absolutely beautiful. This was printed at 100 millimeters a second using the included white PLA that came with the printer. The only fine tuning that I did on this particular print was to increase the first layer height to 150%. Otherwise, the settings are completely stock. Another great thing about this is the SD card actually includes the simplified 3D profile for the default printer settings. And I believe the Cura profile is on there also. I did notice one little thing. The back power cable for the heated bed was actually getting bound up underneath the bed. So I suggest making sure that your cable is actually not twisted like mine was 180 degrees or you go ahead and print out a cable snake. The one from the T-Rex 2 Plus should work. You might need to do a slight modification on it, but it should work just fine for this printer. Another cool feature about this printer is it does have a light built into the top of it. You can add in an M225 to turn the light on as a G-code script at the beginning of your print, and an M224 to turn the light off after your print is done. So I realize that this is a really quick review on this printer, but Honestly, I've only had it for less than a week, so I haven't had time to do a lot of big prints on this thing. We're certainly going to be doing a lot of printing on this printer, and we'll be doing a lot of reviews. And we will see if we can clean up any of the slight little issues we found, like the salmon skin, over the next few weeks. So my first thoughts on this printer is that it's a fantastic printer. I mean, you're talking a 400 by 400 by 500 printer for $900, which is cheaper than the current CR-10S. It's a direct drive system, not a Bowden tube and it's got great print quality. I mean, what more can you say? We'll be coming back on this in probably about a month and doing some final thoughts and reviews and wrap ups on this. But I guarantee I am gonna be using this printer a lot. It is gonna be pretty much running 24 seven for the next month. If y'all like this video, make sure you subscribe, check the like button, and if you want alerts on when the new videos come out, which should be every week, make sure you click that little bell in the corner. And don't forget, it doesn't matter what you're making as long as you're making matter. I'm Jason with 3D Matter Makers, and we'll see you next time.